I reach out to you. Yeah. And mention to you that I have more to say yeah. about being a transgender veteran, and I really did. Uh, I had such a great time the first time I spoke to you that I was just, uh, I was just, you know, all in my head, and I forgot to talk about the seriousness of what happened after my first year um, in my transition. Uh, my first year was pretty euphoric. You know, I didn't believe in dysphoria. I didn't believe in any of the things that people were saying um, happened your first year because I was just so happy to be living my authentic self. I wasn't paying attention to any of the things that other transgender people had been going through because I hadn't gone through it yet. <laughs> so I was just pretty much um, very laid back and very, you know, I started making YouTube videos and I was just pretty laid back. And then the election of 2016 happened. And I did not trust 45. I didn't know what was going to happen. I did not know him. I knew him from a reality TV show, but I didn't know his politics. But I saw the debates and I just knew, uh-oh, we are big trouble if that guy ends up president. And um, so he won. And, and the minute he won, I went into the biggest breakdown. It was almost a nervous breakdown. I was mm. so upset. at my a therapy session, and I just went off. <laughs> In that session where I said, you know, if he comes after us, if he comes after transgenders, I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, I can't go back. I can't live. Try to live like a female when I'm not, never was a female. And I just, I freaked out. I literally was telling everybody, oh my God, I, I don't know what this means, but something's going to happen. <laughs> and, and I don't know, can any of us go back? Are, are we really prepared to, to, to do stuff that this guy comes after that literally was almost suicidal and said, if he comes after us and he succeeds in getting our rights stripped and we don't even have any rights, um, I, I can't live like that. I, I can't live without my HRT. Now, see, the VA, that's all they provided, which made no sense to me that they provide the HRT to veterans, to transgender veterans, but nothing else. No surgery, no support. Inside of the VA, a lot of the employees are not trained to deal with transgender people, transgender veterans. They have no idea. And I have run into things with people at my clinics where I you know, called in the LGBT, the BCC um, of the VA to Give them some training, please, because they're driving me nuts at my clinic. You know, I have one lady who misgendered me six times in the same appointment where she was just supposed to give me my shot. And I was like, you know what? Be quiet. Just be quiet. Because the more she talked, the more ridiculous she sounded. Well, it wouldn't bother me if you misgendered me. And I said, well, you're not transgender. So what? you don't even understand what the hell that means, lady. All I know is I'm getting it from you, from all my family, from friends and people who knew me from before, from community members, people out here in the community, in restaurants, all sorts of places I'm getting misgendered. You guys, when you one person do, does that, you think you're the only one that's doing that. And you're not. Yeah. It's you times 15 other people, uh, 20 other people you got to deal with in your life that are doing that. So, so about, um, so I, contacted my then I contacted my endo doctor and I said um if he signs an order that the VA can stop giving us HRT will you abide by it I mean can I because I can't survive sure. going back and if people don't know um testosterone and I can't speak for estrogen but uh testosterone um if you, you we it's a lifelong commitment whether you're taking a little or a lot of it, it's a lifelong commitment. You stop taking it, your changes reverse. Not all of them, 
but a lot of the changes will reverse. Your wow. body will go back to the way it was because it does re redistribute um, the fat cells and all, all sorts of things. You're, you, if you had hips, they, they'll come back. Um, it, it, it just redistributes everything. Sure. Your voice will go back, go higher, go back to what it was. Um, you may or may not lose hair on your face. A lot of people say that it'll start thinning or whatever, but it won't completely go away. But the, everything that reason why we even get on HRT, and I was definitely afraid to get on HRT. That was the one thing that scared me at my age to do as a veteran was to, to go on HRT and have it do something to my liver or something to me. Um, I was afraid. Sure. Yeah. So I, it took me three years, four years to get on HRT. But once I was on it, I knew the miracle drug. Ah! So I'm, and my, my endo doctor couldn't answer that question. Well, well how was he going to answer that question publicly? You know what I mean? He could get himself in trouble. And he's trying to say something to me, like, almost like, don't worry or something. And I'm like, oh my God. As soon as I sent it, I knew he can't answer this question outright. Yeah. So I'm just worried. I'm worried sick. And then I got mad. Now, not only did I realize 45 got elected and we're in trouble, I also woke up to the fact that I was a black man. <laughs> Listen, when I first started transitioning, it just never even occurred to me. So, somehow there was a disconnect that I was no longer, a I was not a lesbian and I'm a man, and I'm a black man. I didn't say, oh, yippee. I'm, I'm going to be a, you know, I'm a black man. I said, oh, shit. I'm, I'm a black man. Oh, no. Because I knew some of the things, not all of the things, but I knew some of the things that black men face in this country. But I had no idea. And I know the full extent now. And it's really disgusting. So it, it was much easier incognito as a woman. Women fly a little under the radar of the crap that black men face in this country. Black women fly under that radar. Mm. But as a veteran, I couldn't believe, and then he started coming after us, didn't he? Right after the first of the year, 20... How did he come after? So, because these students aren't... He started remember. signing orders. He started doing studies saying that it would be too expensive to um, uh, do, do surgeries for transgender veterans. Now, all of these decisions that they're making at the upper levels, they're not talking to transgender people. So how the hell do they know? How do they know who would and wouldn't opt for surgery? Not everybody who starts their transition even thinks about surgery. I didn't. I, I didn't think about surgeries until I started using some of the prosthetics that we can get, which is the binders and the packers for men, for trans men. And so I didn't know until after some time after I started using those, oh yeah, maybe I need to get surgery. And I hit the TSA and that's what the, oh, I was mauled at the TSA. Oh, how you, oh what an experience that was probably. Well, yeah, and I happened to, yeah, it was. It was almost like being molested um, because they didn't know what they were touching. They assumed. <laughs> They were touching a flat chip, you know, they were just touching pecs. Yeah. Nah, that's not what they were touching. So Ugh. it my sister passed away and I had to go home for her funeral. And I had to experience that at the TSA. Mm. Um oh, God. And it took me a long time to get my top surgery too. And I had to pull some genes out of my ass. Because the VA doesn't VA is my only health care provider. Right. I don't, I don't, I can't afford civilian health care. Did you know Obamacare? Ha! Ah, affordable, my ass. Who can afford five, six hundred dollars a month when you're on a fixed income? You can't work overtime. You can't get a raise. You can't do any of that stuff. Who? Anyway, so all this stuff came into play and I was so hurt and angry because, listen, on the board of direct, on the, some board at, in D.C., 
this transgender veterans getting um, surgeries was on the table. And as soon as they saw somebody was going to change, the, you know, Obama couldn't uh, be president anymore. As soon as they saw that, they took it off the table. And I, that added to my anxiety and my just freaking out that everything was going to change on us. And because I was looking forward to that. I wanted the surgery. I wanted at least the top surgery at that point. And I knew we weren't going to get it. So we weren't. Now, how was I going to figure out a way? And it threw me into having to do, having to do things and getting rejected but, and getting thrown around by the community, mm. by the transgender community, which is, I don't know if I said so the last time that I don't I'm not very close to the community. Yes, I'm trans, but I'm not, I don't pin my hat on the trans community. And why I don't, I, that? I pin my hat on me, myself, and me. What, what, what'd you say? Why is why? that? Why don't you organize? Why aren't there, you? Because look, there's, there's sexism and crap going on in the community. Oh. Trans women treating us like women. Instead of men. Really? Respect of men, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Lord, yes. Look, they go into their transition being having male privilege all of their life. You think they give that up? Because they start transitioning? No. So they're still got this top dog position because of all their resources and stuff that men get that women don't even know that they women suspect they're getting but they have no idea to the extent they're getting. So they still come in with all those connections and all that privilege and all of that connections to the government and all that connections to the private sector, financial, economic, political, all of the, the gay men are top dog in the LGBTQ plus. Gay men are the richest, they're the most powerful, and those people are who transition to trans women. So when they transition to trans women, you think they give that up? No. And they treat us like an afterthought. Trans men or people who identify trans, masculine, whatever the hell they think they identify, they still get treated like you're to be seen and not heard. You're to do our bidding. And if you do our bidding good enough, then we'll let you, then we'll, we'll support you. Well, like that. Yeah. I was like, I that doesn't work for that. You. I don't, I'm not playing those little freaking high school games. I'm 60 something years old. Well, I was 50 something at the time, 59. Doesn't even 59. matter. Doesn't even matter. Yeah. Approaching 50. And I just thought that was retarded. Mm -hmm. But it's not retarded because they don't even know that they're operating from that place. They don't know that they need to be socialized as women. And who's going to give that up anyway, even if they do manage to re-socialize every aspect of their life? It's like, oh, no, but but I lost privilege when I transitioned, so I ain't giving that up. Right. And and this is not what they say in their – well, actually, they say it, but they can't hear that they say it. Listen, one of the things that I – and this isn't on the transgender veteran spectrum, but one of the things that I notice about maturing is you begin to understand and hear – the thoughts you say to yourself about yourself, about the world, about people in it. You don't necessarily hear that stuff in your 20s, 30s, and 40s. You don't, you don't consciously know, oh, I just said something stupid to myself, or I just said something that ground in how I behave in the world. Mm. You don't even know. You're just going on autopilot. Mm -hmm. And if you know anything about mental health or mental health, psychology, Human psychology, you, you learn more the, the more you age. Now, I'm not saying that for everybody. Because right. some of those same people that are my age are still on autopilot. Mm -hmm. I just, because I got clean and sober in 1983, and all of the stuff I had to do to rearrange my personality, my life, who I am, 
And the military's kicked that off. It gave me the discipline. And uh, the, the, the discipline, and then I was striving towards being a man without knowing I was doing it. I knew, because there were thoughts I was having when I was in the military. Like, I, I would be standing there, and we'd see a, 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 a flight of um, men, sure. and I'd be watching them, wishing I was over there and not with the women and the uniforms. I couldn't stand the uniforms. I want the men's uniform. How come we can't pick and choose? How come we can't choose? To have the men's uniform, but these were all just thoughts I was having. I couldn't say it out loud. I couldn't. Who, who would? They would have said, "Emma Gibson, what? What? What are you saying? You know, what? Are you, why are you saying that? Because <laughs> I was incognito. Don't ask, don't tell didn't exist. This is 1970s, folks. And so, don't ask, don't tell wasn't there. Nothing was there to protect us. If you were LGBTQ, they would grab your ass throw you into therapy, and then kick you out of the military other than honorable discharge, which sucks. Mm -hmm. um, and so you couldn't come out. You, 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 you dedicated yourself to being in the closet your entire career, which, oh, my God, how would I have pulled that off? Glad I didn't stay in <laughs> the military. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. So, so all of this stuff started happening in 2016 that just was like a pie in my face where I was like how am I going to deal with this I don't know how to deal with this this is my first time being confronted with being a man being a black man being a trans veteran that has a whole country hating us now this was part of the reason why I didn't want to transition I didn't know what, what but I knew people wouldn't like it and I knew people were hating on transgender people Right. Before I transitioned, I saw that and said, oh, no, I want nothing to do with that. <laughs> but unfortunately, I can't win a battle within myself to deny who I am for the sake of convenience, because it's convenient. I, I couldn't live like that. I couldn't remain a lesbian because it was convenient to be a lesbian. And as a veteran, I thought, how rude that I served for their freedom to be any kind of asshole they want to be to me, to us as a people. Now, I don't know if you, your students know this, but the military is the largest employer of LGBTQ people in America. I did not know that. I don't think my students may not know that either. That's amazing. Especially gays and lesbians, they're everywhere. And so they are the largest employer. Wow. And, 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 the, and those people knew that. They know that. They didn't want to tell anybody that in mainstream media why they do anything. Do these politicians or lawmakers or anybody like that ever tell anybody why they're doing anything? No, they lie. They cover up what's really going with, on. With, they withhold. They withhold. <laughs> yes, they withhold. They withhold. So all of these things was occurring to me all of 2017. And I'm fighting and I'm battling and I'm, I'm, I'm freaking out because I'm, I kept saying, if they take away my HRT, oh, they're screwing with the active duty right now. But when they're done with them, they're going to come after us veterans. And what are we going to do? Anybody? What are we going to do? Right. And the answer was, we don't know. I mean, the answer was nothing. We don't know. We Because look between the PTSD and a lot of other things that happens because of war and stuff like that, uh, we are not the ones to mess with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good point. And we're, tra <laughs> we're trained in weapons and all sorts of and bombs and we're trained, okay? Yeah. And it's funny, he did not come after us. Yeah, they. I'm telling you, they're, in the, they're saying these things in meetings. Ooh, wait a minute. Some of these guys have been in wars. And, ooh, we need to leave them alone. <laughs> <laughs> that active duty, we can pick them off because they are, when you're active duty, military, you, 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 there's laws that you have to abide by that are not like civilian laws at all. You have to do everything they say or you end up in jail. So, or you, you first they start finding you and then they start removing stripes. And then if you commit a crime, you're going to jail. 
and what they consider a crime is a lot stringent than civilians in America. So you you can't, they got your butt when you're active duty. You're, look, a whole bunch of them got sunburned, ran out on the beach, even though they told them not to do that because you've been, you've had greens on and dress blues on, you're in, you're in touch for the last four months and don't go out there in the sun. And they went out there in the sun anyway and got third degree burns on their body. You know what they did? They treated them, took them to the hospital, but told them, oh, you just destroyed Uncle Sam's property. We're going to fine you for, not even your skin belongs to you. Belongs to Uncle Sam. It belongs to the government. <laughs> so that's why they, they go after the most vulnerable. They go after the kids. They go after active duty. What they do? They went after the students because they knew their parents weren't on their side. And then they went after the uh, active duty trends in the military right. because they knew they couldn't fight back. You can't even sue anybody when you're in the military. You have to be out of the military to sue. So, yeah. So they go after the ones that can't do anything. Do Americans, do students, do people know this? That's what the country does is go after the most vulnerable. Some people might put it together, but some people don't put it together. Well, if they manage to wipe them out, there ain't be no, nobody to complain. Right. And let the country know this is what's going on. Whenever anything goes down, we we'll watch who the politicians go after. They go after the vulnerable, the ones that are the least likely to fight back. That's why they've been after Black people for 400 years. We're the least likely to be able to fight back because of our economy, because of systemic yeah. racism, not individual racists. The whole system they designed is bent against us. So what do they do? Oh, and then the transgender military bathroom thing. Oh, 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 oh. Always underestimate my age. I, I look young, but I also don't behave like an old man, you know, uh, losing my feet, which I actually am losing the ability to use my feet and mm. Um, mm. I've got some health issues and the last thing I need is for this country to be to open the door to being subtly and secretively discriminatory towards me because I'm black and because I'm transgender at the VA crap happens I don't know if it's happening because I'm black or it's happening because I'm trans or it's happening because I'm trans man. People don't want me to have that privilege. The same male privilege that they give the white boys. I had a very serious problem with realizing that the reason I didn't want to transition, I was living in the middle of it. And, oh no. <laughs> and I can't go back anyway. So now what? Mm -hmm. I got to figure out a constructive way without destroying myself, without ending up very, very depressed, without ending up suicidal, without ending up homicidal, without ending up all of these things that have been plaguing me, had been plaguing me up to that point for the last 20, 30 years. Um, I had to figure out a way not to destroy myself, not to destroy others, but to make an impact. So I'm all over the place. Even to this day, I'm all over. Here, here I am with you. And this happens all the time. You're not the only one I've done interviews with over the last. Sure, I can't even course, count the number of sure. interviews I've done because I just stick out like that. And then I, I, people offer these things and I jump in on it. You know, yeah, me, I'll do it. Ask Mikey, he'll eat anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but when it comes to while I don't count on my community, my community can count on me. I'm going to show up somewhere. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have something to say. I, I'm going to do something. Um, listen, there was this transgender veteran, a female at the VA who was in the psych ward and reached out on Facebook 
in my area that they were mistreating her and misgendering her. And she had went in there suicidal. She was 10 times more suicidal by the time I got there. I'm but sure. I didn't even know her. Okay, I'd been to some meetings with her, but I didn't know her. But I'm a type of type of guy. I said, oh, hell, no, not on my watch. Mm-hmm. I jumped in my car and went down there and started beating on the door. Let me in here. You've got a patient in their name, blah, 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 blah. And y'all not going to mistreat this lady. Not on my watch. Do something. Well, are, do, are you, do you have power of attorney? Oh, that power of attorney stuff. I'm here. She's reaching out on Facebook. I happen to be in the area. I'm coming down. What are you doing to her? You're not doing, no, you're not going to do this to her. So they went, the guy slammed the door on me. So I went down to the patient advocate's office and I sat there until I could be seen. And then he gave me the same rigmarole about power of attorney. And I said, I don't give a crap about power of attorney. You don't do something, you're going to get lawsuits. And then maybe it'll be a class action lawsuit because I'm sure you've done this and allowed this to happen to other trans veterans. So don't play me. Do something. Well, you need to, um, maybe you need to, uh, I said, okay, you know what? Thank you for your time. I went to the director's office and sat there. <laughs> By the time I finished, they were kissing her ass. She put me on the, um, the list to be able to, one of the people to visit her. And within a day or two, you know, she, I, I ended up on that list and I went in to visit her. Yeah, how's it going? What did anything change? Kind of a thing, probably. Yeah. He was like, Ray, you you performed a miracle, man. They are kissing my butt. They were practically rolled out the red carpet because of you. Thank you. And and I realized afterwards, Jesus Christ, I didn't even know this lady. But there was there's a bond in the military. There's just this bond there my brothers and my sisters they're 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 emotional because um, I'm just that guy type of guy Mm -hmm. that will have your back If there's a if there's any kind of bond, any kind of connection, when things happen to black people, I don't have to know them. I am personally affected. I'm insulted. I'm incensed. I'm hurt. I'm angry. So much and compassion. I don't you have so much compassion for other people. I have compassion with a lot of passion and a big mouth. So, <laughs> I you know. Those are great attributes for sure. For sure. <laughs> they get you into trouble, but they're they also strengths. I'm sure. They're also strengths. Yeah. My, you know, when I, my, as a transgender, I find myself in a very precarious position because I see, I'm standing in the middle and I see all of these things, all these tentacles happening. And as an American, feeling powerless to change anything without invoking and inciting a group of us to do so. And a large group or a powerful group. I went to Costa Rica to consider living there. I want to leave the country. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm brokenhearted because I didn't serve my country. I love this country. Why would I serve this country if I didn't love it? Right. But it ain't loving me. Yeah, so God did something very special to my personality. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, because I'm a magnet. People come to me for all sorts of crazy things. But I also helped a lot of people, helped a lot of transgender veterans, transgender people, period. I, I was helping them get their ID information changed for free. Um, their, their name changes anyway. And... Um, yeah, because there's a free way to do it. It's free to everybody except uh, residents of New York. So, but they need people like us out here who know what's going on, who know the time of day, who's paying attention. <laughs> do you find these people? Do these people find you online? Is that yeah. where you find each other, or they find you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
I guess I got a name because somebody will say, oh, Ray, yeah. he knows I'm good. Yeah. So they would push them my way. Now, I'm such a badass that Facebook kicked me off their platform. Really? <laughs> yep. They got scared of me. I was getting, right after I came out as Bob Gibson's son, they gave me the act. They said, uh-oh. Now, we knew this guy was a little bit popular before, but oh, my God, what if he gets, oh, oh, no, he's going to get, he's going to blow up. So they said, mm-mm, bye. So you don't have a, you don't, you got kicked off Facebook. You don't have an account. You can't have an account. Because yeah. I was so panicked. Yeah. I was crying. I was crying from anger, though, which is different than just crying. I, 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 was, I wanted, I was screaming out loud and in my head. But I, I thank you for your time. 